way to find out how wide spread is. I used Google. I put bicycle, motorcycle, gyroscope, 100,000 hits. And the idea, the idea of the, the idea of gyroscopic stabilization is that the wheel is spinning. If you lean, there's a torque around an axis like this, and it makes a process. You know, the signs are correct. They say, aha, when the bicycle leans, it steers, and that's what's needed to make it stable. Therefore, a gyroscope is what stabilizes the bicycle. That's one line of thinking, which I don't agree with. And the question is, can a non-gyroscopic bicycle be stable? Now, another common idea about stability, and it's one million hits in Google, <laughs> is that there's something which is called cancer or trail. And it's hard to see on a bicycle, but you look at the steering axis, this line, and the line comes to the ground not where the wheel touches, but a little bit in front. So it's like a, it's like the wheel on a chair. Okay, the wheel is behind the axis. And everyone knows that if you have a trolley shopping trolley or a chair, and you turn the wheel the wrong way and move it, then the wheel turns around. It's unstable. So somehow this is the idea that you need you need the wheel to touch behind the steering axis for stability. It's necessary and sufficient in the normal way of thinking. Can a bicycle with no trail or with negative trail be stable? Not according to this theory. But needless to say, I disagree. And there are other ideas for stability which are not very uh, well uh, explained. It said that this angle, lambda, the bigger it is, the more stable the bicycle is. And it looks stable. That's the best that people say. If you look at a city bike, it can be like this. and you look at some racing bike, it can be like this. So the idea is the stability with the angle. So could, uh, could you have a, a, a stable bicycle if the angle is upright or even tip this way? Now another idea, it's not a complete thought about stability, is that somehow the steering axis must be in the front of the bike. So here are some photographs, not mine, of bicycles where the steering axis is the red line. In this case, there's a trail, positive trail. In this case, the steering axis is touching behind the wheel. The trail is negative. People are riding them. I don't know if they're stable without a rider. But we ask the question, can you have a rear steering bicycle which is stable? And in fact, there is some technical literature saying, no, it's impossible. By uh, Carnot, but also by Oskar. Well, that's, that's to motivate what I'm going to talk about. Now I get into the, to the equations and uh, maybe a little bit the numbers. And I'm assuming some, any of you have seen these, know what they're about. Some of you have not, but I'm going to describe them briefly. The originalized equations of motion for a rigid bicycle are two equations. There are, they're represented in matrix form. There are two variables. The roll, the polynomial, C, and the steer delta, okay? So the roll or mean and the steering. So there are two equations for the mass matrix. The first order derivative matrix and a static matrix, if you will. And uh, operating on the second derivative, first derivative, and zero derivative of these two variables, you find the moment for roll. And what is that moment? That's uh, your father. If you're willing to ride a bike, he tilts the bike like this. That's a moment. Usually it's zero. And the steering moment between the rear frame and the handle. That's the moment by the rider for steering, if you have a rider who's doing that. And this will be zero if you're riding with your hands free. And then, of course, in the real world, when you ride with your hands free, you're doing some control motion with your upper body. I'm not considering that. Later. Now, I, I brought this up partly to show the structure, which has significance. The mass matrix derived from the kinetic energy it's symmetric. 
you can see that these terms, which I'm not explaining right now, are the same. It's also positive and definite, because kinetic energy is positive only. The uh, static or stiffness matrix has two terms, a velocity squared term, which has come from centrifugal forces and gyroscopic torques, and a gravity term, which is from potential energy. The gravity term is, uh, is, is again, symmetric from, uh, from the potential energy. This uh, velocity squared term is a zero column, and then these, these where the S terms are gyroscopic. This is the mass of the whole light. This is the Z of the center of mass. Now, in this coordinate system, this is the LeBron picture. Z is down, so Z is negative for uh, this, these coordinates. And so this, is, uh, this could be positive, and this is a positive quantity. And then the C matrix has gyroscopic terms, the ST and the SF, as the total free spin momentum and the front wheel spin momentum. And you have negative here and positive here plus a, a column dependent on the sphere angle. Good. So in the, in the usual way, to decide how this bicycle works with no input, the free motion or the transit motion, the homogeneous solution, you, like, you look for a solution e to the lambda t and you plug it in with the derivatives you get lambda squared, and then for a non-trivial vector of solutions you take the determinant and set it to zero. And I'm using a notation here that if I have two matrices, this uh, star product is A11, B22, A22, B11, minus the, the, the off-diagonal off terms. So this is, this is something which is like forming the determinant, but it's multiplying this matrix times that matrix. And when you take this determinant and expand it, you have the determinant of M times lambda to the fourth. You have a lambda cube term with a velocity also multiplying, and this inner product of the S matrix and the C1 matrix, and so forth. I don't really have to go and name all the pieces at the moment. And uh, the K, you may remember. Whoops, sorry. The K matrix with the subscript 2, meaning velocity squared, has a zero column. Let's show, yeah. So its determinant is zero. That determinant is gone. And this. This form is a quartic equation in lambda where each of these coefficients is a polynomial of velocity. So the C is a C0 plus V squared times C2. And the D is a V times V1 plus V2 times V3. So it's, the, the part of this equation in this short talk that I'm going to talk about the most is E. And E is, a, again, a quadratic is a constant term and a d squared term. I, can someone tell me the mouse disappears and I don't know how to make it? Okay, space bar will go forward. Oh, yeah. okay. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that eigenvalue equation, Well, let me say that, let me say this a different way. A linear system with two degrees of freedom, the leaning and the steering, you expect to have a fourth order dynamical equation. Um, eigenvalues can be found in any CD. You remember that quartic equation you had a velocity dependence in every, uh, almost every coefficient. So then we have what for us is a well known diagram, and a few of you may have seen it before. It's the eigenvalues of the rigid, uncontrolled bicycle as a function of speed, so this is the velocity, meters per second, and the eigenvalues, positive is unstable, the real number is unstable, negative is stable, 
and as you progress along, two real line values join together, and then you see a single line which is representing 